I actually was an intern with Dave Anderson back when I was in college. I went to school uh, at Northern College, and every weekend we would make the drive to Duluth, and we'd spend some time in front of the green screen. He'd critique us on, you know, our work and help us get better in front of the green screen, and he is fantastic at uh, that craft. And so, really, I owe a lot of who I am today as a meteorologist to Dave Anderson. And not only that, he uh, he's the one who reached out to me about the job at KBJR. So even to this day, I'm at that same station. I'm one of his, uh, I'm lucky to be one of his colleagues. And I'm super happy for him uh, winning this Silver Circle. So congrats, Dave. Our very own Dave Anderson, meteorologist, has been inducted into the prestigious Silver Circle, which recognizes those who have made a significant contribution to television for 25 years or more. Yeah, and here with us today is Dave. A big congrats, Dave. That is so exciting. Thanks so much, Briggs. It is a pretty small circle, and I've been hoping to get in for a while. And usually my <laughs> yeah. hopes have been dashed. But uh, well, this, this is, is the year. Call. This is the year. I joined illustrious people from our station, like Barbara Riles, mm -hmm. Michelle Lee, our our former founder Bob Rich, Dave Gench, our former news director, and now they they put an Ely guy into the mix as well. <laughs> well, so. you're in good company, it sounds yeah, like. Really. And I know you have to have worked in broadcast television within the Upper Midwest for 25 years mm -hmm. or more, but you are well beyond 25 years. So what got you into meteorology in the first place? Well, that's an interesting story because, yeah. frankly, it was Jack McKenna, probably the greatest weatherman that this market has ever had. And when I got my first job here at Channel Six, they put me in Jack's department drawing his weather maps on computers because wow. he was a World War II era meteorologist. He didn't have any time for computers. <laughs> <laughs> so, in comes Dave, yeah. Yes, yes. So he would draw the weather map on a piece of paper and give me the numbers and hand them over to me and then I would load them up into our very first weather computer, a live line system three hunter, which had its charms, wow. but it also broke down quite rapidly and, and commonly and frequently. This was in the era when computers, you know, you could reboot the machine with a floppy disk in the yeah. time of a commercial break. And now with our weather maps, you know, if weather max goes down, we're not getting it back to life in time <laughs> yeah, to right? finish the show. So oh my the gosh. simpler machines had a, a little bit of charm. So anyway, I started drawing maps for Jack. Mm -hmm. And then after a little while, he said, well, you know how to work the weather computer. Why don't you do fill in weather? Wow. And this was back in the era when you didn't have to be a meteorologist. McKenna was because he had military experience in it in World War II. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, to be a weathercaster, you just had to stand up for three minutes and not <laughs> fall down. <laughs> <laughs> and so without any education in meteorology, you know, me and lots of other people at the time would just copy what the weather service was saying. Mm. But then in the 90s, Dave Gench got this kick that we should have degree meteorologists in our weather department for some authority. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. And so then I was told, go back to school and get a meteorology degree if you want to keep helping. That makes sense. And so like a good soldier, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> in all those years since, what has been the most memorable weather event you've covered Oh, here? my goodness. Well, before I was a meteorologist, of course, I helped cover the mega storm. That okay. was a pretty big deal. The floods of 2012 were yeah. a pretty big deal as well. There have been blizzards like in 2007 where I would... Uh, you know, seems like with a blizzard, I always get stuck filling in on the morning show, Hunter. <laughs> oh, yeah, which good you times, know right? About. I sure yeah, do so know what that's about. I'd end up sleeping on the floor of the office ahead of time because, you know, that 5 a.m. wake-up call comes pretty quick to get on the air. And it people does. need you during a blizzard, so yeah. you can't be running the risk of getting stuck on the way in. So, yeah, I'd sleep on the office floor the night before. Oh, my gosh. And you don't just do meteorology. You have several things outside of this that you continue to do as well. One of those is teaching the younger generation. Talk about that a little oh, bit. Oh, that's a very good point, Hunter. Yeah, to get the silver circle, and of course, I'm not trying to brag, but the rule is, you know. <laughs> this is time you, to brag, yeah, Dave. Yeah. Do it, do it, Dave. <laughs> get in there. Well, you, you can't just show up and, mm -hmm. and get, you know, like they say on the award, it's got to be for significant uh, above and beyond. So one of those things that I do, yeah, I was... Uh, asked about 20 years ago to be a meteorology instructor at Lake Superior College. My story with that is, uh, so class began on Monday and the instructor didn't show up. They called me on Tuesday and said, can you be in the classroom Wednesday and start teaching this class? Oh we need gosh. a new instructor. So again, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Answering the call. Yep. And so at LSC, I mostly now teach weather skills to the pilot program, the aviation school. And a lot of those students, of course, have gone on to become commercial pilots, airline pilots. A few have become 
One has become a weathercaster. Uh, he has worked for one of those other stations I've heard about. <laughs> I'm not going oh, yeah. to mention his name. <laughs> and uh, others have gone into the professional weather forecasting business. They write those terminal aerodrome forecasts for the pilots and things like that. So that's one teaching job. And yes. uh, from 2004 till COVID, I was teaching at. Uh, Northland College, their broadcast meteorology mm. practice. You have really left your mark, Dave. Yeah, that is incredible. And um, one of my favorite students there, Briggs, is of course a chief known as Adam Lord. Yes. Adam Lord. That's unbelievable. Austin Haskins, uh, he was one of my former students, our former so many. meteorologist. So I love to teach. I love to pass on the weather knowledge to the younger generation. Cub Scouts even, they get the station tour, they get to meet, oh, the mighty Briggs Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have all learned so much from you, Dave. So thank you so much for everything you've taught us yes. and so many others within the industry. So Dave is going to be honored during the Emmy Award Ceremony down in the Twin Cities next month on October 14th, and we cannot wait to celebrate you then. Yeah, so thanks so much for like being here, Dave. <laughs> yes, yep.